Okay then, my friends. So we've reached the point now where we've learned enough of Redis to implement a Redis database in a working application. But we're still just kind of scratching the surface of what Redis can do for us and how it can be used. Now, I mentioned at the start of this series that we'd be focusing on Redis Core, which is the core building blocks of Redis that we've been learning and using. But I also said there was something called the Redis Stack, and the Redis Stack included a bunch of extra modules and tools built around Redis Core to extend its functionality. So, for example, the Redis JSON module allows us to store JSON documents in Redis, in which we can have nested data and use structures like arrays as values. So this makes it much easier to model more complex data that might otherwise have to be split up into different structures like sets and hashes. It also allows us to access and retrieve nested objects without having to transmit the entire JSON document over the network, which can be much more efficient when you're storing more complex data. On top of that, we can perform atomic updates to properties within the JSON object, like incrementing a number or adding a new element to an array without having to fetch deserialize and then re-serialize the whole object before it's saved again. Another module in the Redis stack, Redis Search, works really well with Redis JSON objects too. It allows us to easily query data using secondary indexes that we can create so that we could say something like, get me all the profiles that have a UK address or get me all the products that are a certain price. And we can use both of these modules in Redis to make structuring storing and querying all of our data much easier, especially as our applications grow in complexity. On top of these modules, we have a client library available to us called Redis Ohm, which is basically an object mapping library that makes it really simple to model Redis data within your own application code. And it provides us with helper methods to search and query your data in Redis very, very easily too. Now the two modules, Redis JSON and Redis Search need to be installed into your Redis instance in order for them to be used. And fortunately, when you use the Redis cloud, that's really, really simple to do. So, you know, at the start of this series, when we created a new Redis database, we had this option right here where we can choose Redis Core or Redis Stack. Well, when you choose Redis Stack, it automatically installs the extra modules for you. And not only for JSON support and search, but also for other modules like Redis Bloom and Redis Time Series as well, which inject even more capabilities into Redis. So that's how simple it is to install Redis Stack when you're using Redis Cloud. And now you're free to use those features out of the box, which I'm gonna quickly demo in a minute. If you're using Docker or installing directly on your machine, you can check out the Redis docs to see how to get started. There is guides for each platform right here. But anyway, now we've got the Redis Stack installed on Redis Cloud. I'm gonna grab my connection URI and I'm gonna try using Redis Insights, have just a very little play around with Redis JSON. So what I'd like to do now is just a very quick demonstration of how we can use Redis JSON inside Redis Insights. And this is our database that we're connected to right here. And beneath modules, we can see this little stack icon right here. And if you hover over that, it's gonna show all the modules that are installed, including Redis JSON. So let's click on this database. And also when you choose a database, you should see a Redis stack icon up here as well, if you have the stack installed. And that means we can use these modules inside Insight now with this database. So imagine now we want to create a new JSON object. And by the way, if we go to browser, we still have this old data because I'm using the same database. So we have individual books and the sorted set for the list of books. So if we go to Workbench, what I'd like to do now is create a new JSON document for an author. So I could do that by saying JSON, first of all, then dot, and then whatever the command is. So, you know, like before we had things like get, set, mset, all that kind of stuff. When we're working with JSON, we say JSON first, then a dot, then whatever the command is. So I could set a new JSON object by saying JSON.set, then a key, which is going to be authors, colon, and then some ID, like one. And then when you're first creating this JSON object, we would do a dollar sign. Now this is the path and dollar sign means make this in the root. But later on, if you're updating properties on a JSON object, you would say dollar sign dot and then whatever the property name is like name, so forth. If you wanted to update that, we'll see that shortly. But for now, we're making this in the root. So dollar sign. And then we add single quotes 
and we have our JSON object. So open curly braces, close curly braces, and then inside here, we will say, first of all, the name of the author, and that's gonna be Brandon Sanderson. Then we'll do an age. I don't know his age, so I'll just say 55. And then after that, we will do a books property. Now this is gonna be an array, and we can use arrays inside JSON. So inside here, we'll have a couple of different objects. We'll have one for the first book, where we have a title property, and that's gonna be the final empire. And we'll give this a rating property as well. So rating, and that's gonna be 10. We'll have another book, so another object, and the title of this one is gonna be the Way of Kings. And then we'll do another rating property. We'll say nine. So we'll leave books there for now. And in fact, I think that's pretty much it. Now, one thing you need to be wary of, if this right here goes onto the next line, this closing angle bracket, and it's at the same kind of indentation as this, so not at all, then this is not gonna work because it's gonna treat this as a completely new command when it's up against the edge of the window over here. So let me show you that. If I try to add this, we're gonna get an error. It says, unterminated quotes. And if I hit up, you can see this is the last command. So it's treated that as its own command. So what you need to do is just place your closing angle bracket right there, and then your closing uh, quotation, and then we can add this. So control enter, and now we see okay. Awesome, so let's check out the browser and refresh. Hopefully we see a JSON object, we do. And inside there we have name, age, books. If you click on this, it's gonna expand it. Same again, same again. Okay, all working, awesome. So then, that's us storing a JSON object. How do we get back a JSON object? Well, that's simple. We can say json.get, so json.get, if we can spell it, and then the key name, which is authors1. I'm gonna move this up so we can see it a bit better down here, like so, and now we get that JSON object back, cool. So you can also get individual properties back, so I could get back the name, for example. So let me go up, and this is where this dollar sign path thing comes into play. So if I want to get a certain property, I would say dollar sign to signify the root of the object first of all, then dot and then whatever property. So for example, name, press control enter and I get the name back. Now I could grab books and that would be an array, but also I could grab an individual element from the books like zero and that would get me a single book. And I can take that one step further and grab the title from that book and I'll get the title back, right? So that's really nice, isn't it? You can get individual properties. You can also set individual properties. So instead of get over here, set, and then we have authors one as the key. This again is the path. So you know, like before I said, use dollar sign for the root when we're first setting adjacent object, but when we're setting individual properties on that, then we can say dollar sign and then a path to that property. So I could set the rating, for example, of this first book, not in caps, and that is gonna be now seven, and it should update that one property. So let's go back to the browser and check it out. If we go to the JSON object, I'm gonna refresh this over here, go to books, zero, and now we can see the rating is seven. So that was just a very, very quick introduction to using JSON in the Redis stack. Hopefully now though, you can see how easy it is working with JSON in Redis. All right then, so that's the end of this Redis playlist, but I have actually also just released a Redis stack course on the NetNinja Pro website as well. And in this course, you're gonna learn how to use Redis JSON and Redis Search together in more detail, along with Redis Ohm to create a full application with Redis as the primary data store. There's loads and loads to learn and you can get access to it now for just $4. So I'll leave a link to this page down below the video so you can check it out. You can also get access to the course and all my other pro courses by signing up to a NetNinja Pro membership, which is just $9 a month. And the first month is half price when you use this promo code right here. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this series and hopefully I'll see you on the NetNinja Pro site to carry on your Redis adventure.